Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, I want to discuss calculating apparent power in a balanced three-phase Y circuit. Okay, so here we show our three-phase. This could be a motor, something like that. But again, we're looking at the exact same power factor. We have the identical power factor, and they all have the same impedance for phase, per phase, sorry, which means we're going to have a balanced load as well. Okay, so when we look at the power triangles from each one of these individual phases we're going to find that they make essentially the exact same power triangle what that means is each one of these is going to have the same amount of power and the same amount of reactive power and one key thing we're going to mention right now is the reactive power from each one of these coils is going to be lagging vars okay pythagorean's theorem what we would end up with is the exact same amount of apparent power per phase. And because each of these has the exact same phase angle and has the same power factor, I would end up with three identical triangles, which when we combine these into a total, the first thing we can say about calculating three phase power in a balanced Y system is this. Power total is equal to the power of phase one plus power of phase two plus power of phase three. Okay, that will give us the power total of our entire circuit. Same thing can be said for reactive power. Reactive power total in our circuit is equal to the reactive power of phase one plus the reactive power of phase two plus the reactive power of phase three. Okay, and finally, because they're all at the same angle, it's safe to do this, and only because they're at the same angle. If they were different angles, I would not be able to do the following step. S total, our apparent power total, is the apparent power of phase one plus the apparent power of phase two plus the apparent power of phase three. Okay, so again, these will work in unbalanced and balanced. This only works in balanced. Because again, if I was to go through with an unbalanced load, I would end up with slightly different triangles per phase, which means that my VAs would be at different angles. I can't add things together that are at different angles. Okay, so this works in a balanced and unbalanced. And if you are faced with an unbalanced question, I would just go through and do it this way. The only thing we need to keep in mind when we're talking about reactive power is is it leading or lagging? Because remember, leading reactive power will cancel out lagging reactive power. Okay, so with this statement in mind and keeping in mind that we're dealing with only balanced circuits right now, I can also say this. Power total equals power of one phase times three. Q total equals reactive power of one phase times three. And apparent power total equals apparent power per phase times three. Okay, these statements will hold true again as long as we are dealing with a purely in sorry uh, a purely balanced circuit. Okay, because what I want to do is take a look at this formula right here. I want to break it down so that we can build ourselves a new formula. So I'm going to try to erase our load here real quick. Hopefully it doesn't destroy the screen too bad. All right, so if we can say that S total equals three times S of one phase, I'm just gonna flip it around so you'll see what I'm doing here. We can also say that S total equals three times voltage of that phase times the current of that phase, because if I wanna find the apparent power per phase, I need the phase voltage and phase current. V times A equals VA. If I break this down again, I can look at this three. S total equals, kind of a weird thing, root three times root three equals three. So we're really taking this three now and splitting it into root three twice. Times voltage per phase times current per phase. 
Okay? Now, if we look at what's inside this equation right now, we have root 3 times phase voltage. We have to know that root 3 times phase voltage will give me line voltage. So now I can say root 3 times E line times I phase equals apparent power. Okay? And if we remember that I phase is actually equal to, sorry, I'm just going to grab this, I line, we can now make our statement. Apparent power total is equal to root 3 times E line times I line. Okay? So, excuse me, now I can move through and say, well, what if I wanted to find power total and all I had was apparent power total? Well, power total is equal to root 3 times E line times I line times cos of the angle, which is power factor. But E line times I line times cos of the angle times root 3 will give me the power total. Q total equals root 3 times E line times I line times sine theta. That way, if I'm given an FLA of a motor and say the phase voltage, I can take this and convert it into total apparent power for my circuit. And from there, I can go and find the total power of my circuit. Or I could find the total reactive power of my circuit. Or we could work with any combination therein as long as we can transpose really this formula right here. That's going to be our formula for any of these calculations. Hopefully this has helped. In the next video, we'll take a look at an example where we run through and do this type of a calculation and figure out apparent power and we'll prove that these all go hand in hand. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this has helped. See you next time.